are among the most endangered mammals on Earth. For more than 35 years, the Duke Lemur Center has worked side by side with organizations and people in Madagascar to create opportunities for positive change and to play a leading role in preventing the island's legendary endemic and endangered species, especially lemurs, from being lost forever. In the mid-1980s, uh, Madagascar politically began to uh, turn away from the then Soviet Union and open its borders and doors more to Western countries. And it was a big change for the country. And prior to that, Western countries, researchers, scientists, individuals, really were not able to, from, from Western countries, were not able to get into to Madagascar. Dr. Elwin Simons uh, began working in the country doing paleontological work, and Dr. Simons was director of the Duke University Primate Center at the time, which of course is now the Duke Lemur Center. Widely regarded as the founder of modern primate paleontology, Elwin was also a major figure in lemur conservation. His goal was both to diversify the gene pool of species already living at Duke and to start new conservation breeding programs as a second line of defense against extinction. Dr. Simon was really visionary in seeing what he felt the lemur center could, could be like in terms of the number of species, the, of the different species that we could house and learn from. And so he began to talk to the Department of Water and Forests in Madagascar and the lemur center was able to get out of Madagascar some new species of lemurs to house at the lemur center. Today, the Duke Lemur Center houses the most diverse population of lemurs in the world outside of their native Madagascar. And more than 3,285 infants have been born within our conservation breeding program. As that relationship built, the Malagasy, the Department of Water and Forest, invited the Lemur Center to help them at a forestry station on the East Coast called Ibaluina. But it wasn't just a, a forest station, it was also a place where the Water and Forest Department housed lemurs that had been confiscated, illegally held and confiscated because it's illegal to hold, uh, to have pet lemurs in Madagascar. So my wife, Andrea and Katz and I were sent by Dr. Simons to advise uh, the Department of Water and Forest on best methods of taking care of the lemurs that they have. Madagascar's involvement remains key to the DLC's success helping and protecting both wild and captive lemurs on the island. In 2017, the government of Madagascar again requested the assistance of Andrea and the Duke Lemur Center, this time with developing a lemur care manual and conservation breeding program for all 14 of Madagascar's licensed zoos and wildlife parks. Well, Andrea and I went there first in 1987, and we worked with, uh, with the Department of Water and Forest on husbandry and management of the lemurs. Uh, but as we were there that year and succeeding years, we really began to see the potential that Ivaluin had, especially as an environmental education center. So over the years, to kind of collapse many years into a smaller time, um, Andrea and I developed different activities, conservation activities at Ivaluin, starting with environmental ed education, but expanding to other activities like reforestation and sustainable agriculture. Charlie and Andrea lived and worked in Madagascar for 15 years, both for the Duke Lemur Center and in partnership with the Madagascar Fauna and Flora Group, a consortium of zoos and other institutions committed to protecting wildlife in Madagascar. Over time, they and the dozens of Malagasy staff they trained at Ivaluin took what had been a crumbling former forestry station and transformed it into a 700-acre environmental education center. 
Today, it's lemurs and other native wildlife attract as many as 20,000 visitors a year. Park Ibuluin has maintained a strong partnership with the DLC, including sending a breeding pair of blue-eyed black lemurs born at Ibuluin to Durham in 2017. Through the years, when Dr. Ann Yoder became director of the Lemur Center, uh, we felt like the Lemur Center could do more in terms of conservation in Madagascar. So we began looking for a site for an independent project in Madagascar and spent a couple of years talking to conservation professionals, meeting with villagers, looking at sites, and we settled on working in the northeastern part of Madagascar in what's called the Sava region. And uh, what the Lemur Center now does in the Sava region is using really the same strategy that the Madagascar Fauna and Flora Group uses in the Tamatav area of Madagascar. And that's to say activities that help people get at not having to cut forest, planting trees back on forest land, educating young people in wise management of natural resources, but also the importance of protecting some forest and the importance of wildlife. So we are doing reforestation. We are doing environmental education, which is the long-term conservation activity. We are doing family planning and uh, we are doing also research, working with uh, the Duke University and uh, we are doing uh, training people about uh, agriculture, the capacity building. So most of our activities are working with local community, not just doing our own work protecting the forest of protecting lemurs which we cannot do alone. I do feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants with the DLC project. I mean, the depth of the projects go even beyond the 10 years of the DLC Sava project. First and foremost, capacity strengthening for local actors at all levels is part of every program that we have because we, we need to be able to have that local uh, team that is able to conduct the research into the future. Um, for example, you know, one of the biggest threats to biodiversity in Madagascar is deforestation for the expansion of agriculture. So agriculture is clearly fairly important. Uh, since the beginning, the DLC has worked hard to develop more sustainable and productive forms of agriculture. And we will continue this into the future as we develop uh, more modern philosophies such as regenerative agriculture. So in line with sustainable agriculture is landscape restoration. Uh, the DLC, since the beginning, has had reforestation as a big component of the conservation program. So most recently, we've partnered with several communities to restore over 100 acres. Um, now those partners have already planted over 60,000 trees just this year. And we're expecting that to increase exponentially over the years as their skills develop and as the effects cascade through the community. Another area that's really important for DLC is environmental education. Um, it's, it's really important that people can learn the fundamentals of the environment to then be able to know how to conserve it. So since the beginnings of the DLC programs, 
Um, over 3,000 teachers in the Saba region have been trained on how to incorporate more environmental education into their curriculum. There has been a tremendous shift in the paradigm of conservation in Madagascar from predominantly foreigners to now um, predominantly Malagasy staff, people in charge, and locally grown uh, organizations that are in Madagascar itself. Um, this is really important for the sustainability of conservation because these local stakeholders have to be the ones who are empowered to do this work. I think that the DLC has played an important role in uh, facilitating this transition. The DLC has really made it a fundamental part of our programs to train Malagasy students and scientists to uh, create these educational opportunities where they can achieve their goals, get their degrees, and then they go on to become leaders. So several of the Malagasy uh, scientists who have participated in DLC programming have now go on to be leaders themselves and are also you know, training the next generation of Malagasy scientists. Now there are more and more Malagasy people who is coming a researcher for the biodiversity in Madagascar. That means that they are aware about the, the challenges that uh, facing Madagascar in terms of for the environment. So since I was at school, there is a big change for the new generations to, to be involved more and more in conservation and for the biodiversity. We are so grateful for the network of DLC supporters. Um, all of our programs are supported entirely by grants and donations. And while we work really hard to get external grants and funding, um, the DLC programs, especially in Madagascar, have truly been sustained by the multi-year commitment of our donors and supporters. Um, without that kind of multi-year support, we would never be able to see so many of these projects from start to finish. And they, these projects do take decades. They're not finished in a few weeks. So it's really been key to the success of the programs. From all of our partners in Madagascar, I really want to extend a, our thank you to all of the DLC supporters. Be a part of the Duke Lemur Center's future work in Madagascar. Consider a pledge or recurring gift as a sustainer and support our conservation efforts for years to come. Every gift helps. Give online now at lemur.duke.edu forward slash Madagascar.